seek to do good, and you will find that happiness will run after you. A politician thinks of the next election. A statesman, of the next generation. A politician thinks of the next election, a statement of the next generation. A politician looks for the success of his party, a statesman for that of his country. The statesman wishes to steer, while the politician is satisfied to drift. I can do small things in a great way. Manliness means perfect manhood, as womanliness implies perfect womanhood. Manliness is the character of a man as he ought to be, as he was meant to be. We are either progressing or retrograding all the while, there is no such thing as remaining stationary in this life. This is the way to cultivate courage, first, by standing firm on some conscientious principle, some law of duty. Next, by being faithful to truth and right on small occasions and common events. Third, by trusting in God for help and power. Conscience in the soul is the root of all true courage. If a man would be brave, let him learn to obey his conscience. He who believes is strong. Strong convictions precede great actions. Submission to duty in God gives the highest energy. He, who has done the greatest work on earth, said that he came down from heaven, not to do his own will, but the will of him who sent him. Whoever allies himself with God is armed with all the forces of the invisible world. The bravest of individuals is the one who obeys his or her conscience. It may make a difference to all eternity whether we do right or wrong today. One of the best things in the Gospel of Jesus is the stress it lays on small things. It ascribes more value to quality than to quantity, it teaches that God does not ask how much we do, but how we do it. Even where there is talent, culture, knowledge, if there is not earnestness, it does not go to the root of things. All the strength and force of man come from his faith in things unseen. Love is the spirit of life, and makes all things live. Conscience is the root of all true courage. Never hurry. Take plenty of exercise. Always be cheerful. Take all the sleep you need. You may expect to be well. When we trust our brother, whom we have seen, we are learning to trust God, whom we have not seen. When we trust our brother, whom we have seen, we are learning to trust God, whom we have not seen. Take thy self-denials gaily and cheerfully, and let the sunshine of thy gladness fall on dark things and bright alike, like the sunshine of the Almighty. Whenever we do what we can, we immediately can do more. He who believes in goodness has the essence of all faith. He is a man of cheerful yesterdays and confident tomorrows. When I consider what some books have done for the world, and what they are doing, how they keep up our hope, awaken new courage and faith, soothe pain, give an ideal life to those whose hours are cold and hard, bind together distant ages and foreign lands, create new worlds of beauty, bring down truth from heaven, I give eternal blessings for this gift, and thank God for books. Amid all change, we desire something permanent, amid all variety, something stable, amid all progress, some central unity of life, something which deepens as we ascend, which roots itself as we advance, which grows more and more tenacious of the old, while becoming more and more open to the new. If we desire to do what will please God, and what will help men, we presently find ourselves taken out of our narrow habits of thought and action, we find new elements of our nature called into activity, we are no longer running along a narrow track of selfish habit. 
he who never looks up to a living God, to a heavenly presence, loses the power of perceiving that presence, and the universe slowly turns into a dead machine, clashing and grinding on, without purpose or end. If the light within us be darkness, how great is that darkness! The atheist has no hope. Religion is life, philosophy is thought, religion looks up, friendship looks in. We need both thought and life, and we need that the two shall be in harmony. Art itself, in all its methods, is the child of religion. The highest and best works in architecture, sculpture and painting, poetry and music, have been born out of the religion of nature. Unmixed praise is not due to anyone. It leaves behind a sense of unreality. We can only do justice to a great man by a discriminating criticism. Hero worship, which paints a faultless monster, whom the world never saw, is like those modern pictures which are a blaze of light without any shadow. It is no natural for a man to pray that no theory can prevent him from doing it. When I consider what some books have done for the world, and what they are doing, how they keep up our hope, awaken new courage and faith, soothe pain, give an ideal life those whose hours are cold and hard, bind together distant ages and foreign lands, create new worlds of beauty, bring down truth from heaven, I give eternal blessings for this gift, and thank God for books. In the spirit of faith let us begin each day, and we shall be sure to redeem the time which it brings to us, by changing it into something definite and eternal. There is a deep meaning in this phrase of the Apostle, to redeem time. We redeem time, and do not merely use it. We transform it into eternity by living it aright. Let us not torment each other because we are not all alike but believe that God knew best what he was doing in making us so different. So will the best harmony come out of seeming discords, the best affection out of differences, the best life out of struggle, and the best work will be done when each does his own work, and lets everyone else do and be what God made him for. Every man, every woman, every child has some talent, some power, some opportunity of getting good and doing good. Each day offers some occasion for using this talent. As we use it, it gradually increases, improves, becomes native to the character. As we neglect it, it dwindles, withers, and disappears. This is the stern but benign law by which we live. 